Hello, beautiful people. This is Miriam K. For those of you that don't know me, I'm a sickle cell patient sufferer. I'm an advocate and I'm also the CEO and founder of the Door Foundation, which is a non-profit foundation for sickle cell support and youth development. Sickle cell is a genetic blood disorder that affects so many thousands of people all around the world but there's still so much that's not understood about the condition and um, September is sickle cell awareness month and I wanted to use this as an opportunity to raise awareness about the condition what we go through so this is why I filmed I did a vlog of my previous admissions where I was literally in and out of hospital uh, three times, so within just a week. So this what that is what it's about. The video is going to be split into two parts because I don't want it to be too long. So this is part one, and then um, part two will still will soon follow. I am also going to be adding subtitles because I was in so much pain and then I didn't realize that my voice was not clear at all in any way and um, so i'm gonna add subtitles to the video just to kind of help and um, people that may not be able to hear me properly i'm doing this video not as a way of or sympathy beating me no i'm doing this to raise awareness so people can just kind of have an insight into what we deal with because we are just like any other person we're human we go through things but unfortunately we have a condition that it takes an aspect of our life but that shouldn't also stop us from living even though sickle cell is one of the most common genetic disorders it is still misunderstood so much and i hope this video is kind of an eye opener into some of those things Thank you. Please feel free to comment if you have any questions. Feel free to let me know. Thank you so much for watching and thanks for your support in advance. Subscribe because I'm going to be doing more and more, more videos on different topics surrounding sickle cell and life, lifestyle generally. Thank you so much and um, I look forward to your feedback and thank you. For me, whenever I get pain to the point of, you know, that requires me needing to come to a hospital, I usually bring notebook, um, my tablet, my pad, phone, of course, charges, because yeah, I just try and use that time to do something. Whether it's to write an article for my website, whether it's to do anything for a client, and at the moment I've got a couple of clients that I'm working with for um, marketing and promotion services. Like, so I just as much as I can do but it's very difficult to do something when you're in pain when you're in a lot of pain but this is where it is and I'm just gonna do what I gotta do you know and just make the most of the time my reading glasses yeah just make the most of the time and usually that helps is kind of distraction as well for 
pain but sometimes people don't understand that like coming in it, it it's so difficult especially when you're you know I'm a mom and I wanna I don't like being away from my kids and and you have a condition that basically you cannot control that it's so difficult and on top of that it's very painful <laughs> and it just frustrates the hell out of me sometimes and I know people be like but you've had this disease all your life and it's always been like that yeah that don't make it any more any less difficult it's even more challenging now because now it's not just about me it affects my family, my kids, my husband, because I have to be away from them, which is so, so hard. Well, this is the reason why I put so much energy and effort into making sure, like, there's more out there about this condition and our oh, lives that are being affected not just the person suffering from the condition but everybody around them you know so today luckily, luckily this is a weekend and um, my husband's off if not then i gotta think about the kids where do they go and it's not something that you can predict so you can never plan ahead of time i didn't wake up this morning thinking this night i'll be here i didn't so It's difficult. It's like every time I feel good and I feel like I'm making progress, I'm taking steps forward. I always feel like I'm being pulled backwards. And it's so hard because it's like that feeling of I feel like I'm being defeated and I will not fight so hard for. It just gets low. Don't get me wrong, I'm very grateful for every moment, every day. The past couple of months, you know, I lost a friend of mine from Sikusa, and I lost one of our, one of the, the, the Sikusa sufferers that we um, help back home with my my charity foundation to our foundation you know and this is a boy that had a promising future ahead of him a boy that had great potential that is no more and a friend of mine that that i've known for so many years and somebody that wanted just the simple things in life a family to complete education, be successful, and all of that, and now she's no more, she's lost her battle. Yeah. But it's what it is, just have to keep going. Just have to stay strong. It's just easy to say. Very easy to say. But not easy to do. Easy to do. So I just I keep myself busy because I hate having to think and because then I'm forced to dig up some of those feelings that I rather just lock away. But one thing that I've always found very helpful is like writing and trying to help people. For me, that's my own way of giving back. It helps me to just 
focus and up and just keep fighting because when I know when I realize it's not just about me but the people that I'm trying to fight for the people it just kind of makes me this keeps me going and it definitely hasn't been an easy journey I know no one's journey is but just you know so sometimes If you're watching this and you're going through it, just know that you know, you're not alone. It's difficult, but we all have a purpose. As even when you don't feel it or see it, you do. And, and giving up is just not an option. We gotta keep fighting. Not just for our generation, but for those coming behind. So they will be in a world that understands sickle cell better and the struggles that we face. And they're able to see our so society at some point can see us as individuals instead of just putting us all in a box and making assumptions. Yeah. And speculations and stigmas, labels, all of that, like I've gone through. And to be honest with you, I am beyond grateful even to be able to still be here saying the story because my family was told I, I was unlikely gonna even make it past 16, and here yeah, I am in my late 20s, so with two beautiful kids. Um, a very loving and caring husband, a very a great, wonderful family and friends. I've been blessed with because they have been part of this journey and keeping me going. And I know they want to, you know, see things get better for us. And it will, it will. It's not gonna be an easy fight, but we just have to, you know, because so it's as real as it gets. And all those statements that are out there, or preconceived ideas that a lot of people have, a lot of those have to be broken. And And it, it shall be so. It will be so. Definitely. <laughs> Things will get better. Just gotta keep that faith. Keep praying, keep hoping. And keep working hard. And doing what it takes to raise the awareness. Get the message out there. So people can see that this is no joke. This is what we gotta deal with. Some people feel like we wanna be here. I don't know who in the hell would. I don't want to leave my kids, my, my family, my home, my comfort. And all the time when this happens, it slows me back. The work that I have to do, it slows me down. Things that I will plan, you know? So it takes great effort to be able to even do the basics. But I'm always, always grateful for being here for everyone that's been part of this journey that supports. Even when the when people just send a message checking on me, it goes a long way. Having that love and support by so many people, I think that's one of the greatest blessings I've had in my life. And even with everything. Just my loved ones make me feel like 
to them I'm God I'm everything they don't see Miriam um, the sickly person or the lady with um, sickle so they just see me as Miriam and that's it they support me and right now I'm planning to um, go travel to Sierra Leone where we have we have um, we're in the process of officially opening does to our first support center where where families and um, sufferers and their loved ones will be able to get support information you know, just to help them and we'll be able to work with different institutes in the community like schools to make sure they know that person to be able to give them the right support to be able to work with good medical centers and um, doctor, good medical professionals that actually understand and will be offering workshops to just give them that more in-depth understanding because some of the people that have lost their lives that I know of in Sylvia and especially within my community a lot of it could have been prevented by better knowledge understanding it could have some of it I know that it is what it is, you know, life, people are gonna pass regardless, but let it not be because of something that could have been prevented. I think about the boy that we recently lost and somebody that I saw that had such a bright future is now no more. And it is sad, so rest in peace to him. And also rest in peace to my friend Lena Johnson. You might not hear to fight, but just believe that we are gonna keep fighting on your behalf. I personally will keep pushing those things we talked about that you wanted to achieve. I will continue to work hard so we can. Just know that your death was not in vain. And I think it's a wake-up call to a lot of people, even us, the sufferers. So, and rest in peace to, to every other person that have lost their life to this condition or anything associated to it. It is hard, but these are not just fallen angels. The people with stories, the people that have got a lot going, they're a lot, and I know.
I've seen the doctor and um, the pain is under control now and so I'm gonna head home and just go home rest and um, yeah just be with the kids you know because I don't like staying in the hospital so when once I feel that I'm able to manage then I'd rather go manage at home at least being with the kids that will really help as well it's a big distraction and um, it helps to just kind of speed just to speed up my you know recovery I'm tired but just not go home <sighs> anyway thank god thank god i'm not gonna have to be here for days this is you know been hours so yes at least but since i've been here i've been able to kind of just get some stuff done some research some reading and all that it's able to get that done so in that case that's good but they said i still have i have a bit of a fever but that's probably because i I got a bit of a cold, but that's not a big deal for me as long as the pain is controlled with just, you know, like mild pain kills, then I'm fine. I can manage uh, my, at home. So, just praying everything goes over right and so I can go and just go home to my family and and my kids just be able to be with them you know yeah so i'm gonna be making my way so i oh, gotta take one of these out before i go just do monitor i'll do that <sighs> What's your pen score just now? Ten. Mm. Okay. Have you been sick today? Um, 